Hey guys and welcome back to another Mansion 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to show you how to set up visual effects for your footsteps. So when the player walks, they're going to have some visual effects underneath their feet. For example, going over dirt, grass, or in general. So I'm going to be going over those today. So this is also based upon my footsteps sound effect system. So if you've already watched that, it's going to be very, very similar. In fact, I'm using some of that code. However, you don't need to watch that to do this. I'm going to be going over from scratch. And also, I'm going to be using the materials of wood, concrete, and grass, since that's just what I had last time, and it works well for this as well. However, again, you can use whatever you like. Now, in this, I'm also going to be using a free pack of the Unreal Marketplace for different Niagara visual effects for our footsteps, so I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. This is completely free, and you get all of this good stuff here. So, without further ado, let me show you what this is going to look like. So, we get in, I'm going to get close to the ground. You can see that when we're on this wood, it's going to be dirt, as it's kind of the brown material, so we've got dirt. Over here it's just going to be general, so we've kind of got this visual effects here. Some of them are a bit hard to see and that's just purely because the colour difference is pretty much the same on these. And then we've got grass here as well, so we're going to have grass, dirt and general and that's what we're setting up today. But with this system it's very easy to adapt it to have it do anything you'd like. So you can set it up with multiple different visual effects on multiple different surfaces. So I'm going to be going over the basics today, showing you how to do this. So let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first step we want to do is we want to set up our different physical materials that we want to be able to walk on. So again, in this example, I'm going to have grass, dirt, and general. So that's what I'm going to be doing now. So if I go to edit, project settings, we can then go down to physics on the left under engine here. And if we scroll down again, we can find physical surfaces. Now you can see I already have some in here, and these are the ones I'm going to be using. So surface type 1, I've got grass. Surface type 2, I've got wood. Surface type 3, I've got concrete. What you can do is just select none, and then type in the name for whatever you want. So we could have sand like so, and now we have a surface type of sand. It's that simple, and again, I'm just using those names as they're something which I set up in a previous tutorial for first step sound effects. But again, choose the names which you want, which best correlate with what you're actually setting up. So again, grass, dirt, mud, concrete, sand, wood, anything like that. And then we can close that straight away. Now what we want to do is set up the physical materials. So that's the physical surface, and we want the materials to correlate to that. So I'm just going to do it here. I'm going to right click, go to physics, and then I'm going to get a physical material. Select the physical material there, and I'm just going to name this one grass PM for physical material. And then we're going to right click and duplicate that and name this one general PM, as that's just my general one. Right click again and I'll get dirt, as these are the ones which I'm going to be using dirt PM, like so. Now, again, you'll notice that I named them slightly differently, so actually, what I will do is I'll just change the names in here just to make it make more sense for you. So physics, I'll go down. I've got grass, I've got dirt, and I've got general. So I'm just adding all of the ones which I'm going to use. So in my project, I have grass, wood, concrete, sand, dirt, and general. But again, set the ones up which you want to use and you're going to have. We can close that, and now we have these here as well. And again, set all of these up for the amount which you have for what you want as well. And then I'm going to open up the dirt PM here. Under physical properties and surface type, I'm changing it from default to dirt, which makes sense, right? This physical material for dirt, we want to have the physical property of dirt as well. So we can save, close that, do the same for general. So surface type is going to be general. We can save that. And then finally, the same for grass. We're going to change it to be grass, like so, and close it. So it's a very simple process, quite repetitive. You get the idea, you get the gist of it. Next, we want to actually apply these to our materials. So you see we have dirt, general, and grass. Let's apply these to our actual materials as well. So this grass one, I'm going to select the material and just double click it there to open it up. So now I'm inside of my grass material. And you can see here we have physical materials. Under this material, I'm just going to select my grass PM here. So grass PM is the one I just made for grass physical material. So now this material of grass here has the physical material of grass which has the physical surface of grass as well. So now whenever we walk on this material, the code knows that this material is meant to be grass. So we can apply that like so. Then we can close it and do the exact same for the other one. So this concrete one here, I'm going to double click to open the material up. And I just want this to be general PM. I'm going to apply it. So this is just a general physics material. So this is going to be concrete, just general flooring, tiling, anything along those lines. And once that's applied, we're going to close it and then do the final one here with wood. Let's see if we do have a dirt material in the start content. We do. So let's select the dirt there, double click to open that up, 
and then I'm going to change the physical material to be our dirt PM there and hit apply. Now because I haven't used the dirt material I haven't tiled it or scaled it properly so I don't know what it's going to look like but you get the idea we have a dirt material with a dirt physical material with the dirt physical properties on it so now we've just gone through the whole list going all the way back to the code so it knows this dirt. So this is what we now have set up so far we've got our dirt general and grass and in the code they are dirt general and grass so the code knows what it is as well. So now we're going to set up actually spawning in the visual effects on the correct surface. So what we're going to do first is we want to open up our animations. So for me that's going to be a mannequin animations and I'm going to open up the animations which I want these effects to be spawned on. So for me I'm just going to do this on the third person run but for you it's going to be the run, walk, idle, jump. Basically if this animation is playing you want to be able to spawn in the visual effects. So when you land from the jump spawn the effect. When you're walking spawn it running idle anything along those lines but for me in this project I'm only using the run animation anyway so I'm only going to bother setting up on that so open up the animations you want to use then we can just pause the animation and then we can just get to a side on view and bring the timeline all the way back to the start now if we drag it along we can see where our first footstep is so I think around there is where the player's foot is fully on the ground so around frame 7 so you see we have this notify track up here. What I'm going to do is right click on that around frame 7 there. I'm going to add a notify. I'm going to add a new notify. Naming this one footstep R I believe. So let's check. Yep that's the right footstep. So now when the animation reaches frame 7 it knows that the right foot has just hit the ground so it's spawning a right footstep. If we go back through until the left foot hits I'll say around there, around 15. I'm going to right click add notify, new notify, naming this one footstep L. So now there is where the left footstep hits. We can go through and see if there's any more. We've got right, we've got left, and I think that's good. Like that as it is. And again, you want to do this on all of the animations which you're going to be using. So once you've done that, you can just save and close that animation as that's all we need to do in there, just set up the notifies. In the other animations, so let me open up the walk just to show you. If you're doing this in more than one, what we can do is again find where we want it to be so I'm not going to bother too much so I'll just put it there that's the right so what I can do is right click add notify go to skeleton notifies and now we can choose footstep R there as we've just created it already footstep notifies from a previous tutorial so don't worry about that but you should have footstep R and footstep L as we've just created those so you can then click on that to use it and it will be the same notify which is what we want so that will work perfectly for us again I'm not going to bother with this animation so we can close that like so what we want to do next is we want to open up the animation blueprint. So for me that's again going to be content, mannequin, animations, third person and MVP. But just open up the animation blueprint you're using for your character. In here we want to go straight to the event graph and you should have this code here by default but we're not going to mess about with that so don't worry if it's different for you but this is what you get by default in a third person and a BP. Just somewhere underneath this I'm going to right click and I'm going to search for one of the anim notifies we've just made. So let's start with the right foot step. So I'm going to search for anim notify footstep r so now we have whenever the right foot hits the ground it's going to fire off this notify which is perfect so we can come out of this and we can just simply get a line trace by channel and we want to do this because we want to take a line trace from the player down to the floor to see which surface we're currently standing on and we're walking on so that's what we want to do with the line trace so let's do that so we're going to right click and get player character just to get the character the player is obviously controlling so that's controller, so I need to get player character, so we can get the character that the player is playing as. Out of the return value, we're going to get actor location. And we don't need to cast because this isn't specific for a character, this is just the general location of a character. We don't need to access that character's blueprints. The return value of that will go straight into the start, as we want to start it from where the character is. And out of this return value again, we're going to get a vector minus a vector just taken off about 150 on the Z because this means that it's going to start drawing the line from the player and then go down on the Z 150 because then it will hit the floor and we'll know which surface we're walking on and if you want to test it you can change draw debug type to for duration so you can see what happens and I will do that actually just to show you what happens as well so if I change it to for duration we can hit play and walk around you can see when we move we're going to get this line trace going straight down when the right foot hits the ground like so and that is how we're going to tell which surface we're on. So again I'm going to change that back to none as we know it works. Everything else on that can stay the same. 
After this, we want to hold down B, left click to get a branch. The condition going to the return value and the execution going into the branch there, because this means we only want to fire off the rest of the code if the line trace hits something. If it doesn't hit something, then we're not really going to be on the ground, are we? So we don't want to do anything. Then out of the out hit, we want to get surface type, like so. And this, is, as it sounds, it's going to get whichever surface we're on. So if this hits the ground, it's going to see what the physical surface is for that ground we're on. So out of the return value of that, we want to then get a switch on E physical surface, connecting that to true of the branch. And this just gives us all of the different surfaces which we have in our game, which obviously default, grass, wood, concrete, sand, dirt, and general. So these are all of the ones which we've just set up. So you can open that up and then access the ones you want to use. Just after this, we're going to right click and spawn system at location. I'm not going to connect that to anything just yet. And we're going to right click the system template, promote that to a variable, and name this one footstep VFX or anything that you like. But that makes sense to me as I'm going to be setting this to be the current visual effect I want to spawn in. And I'm going to compile that. And I'm going to set this, so drag, drop, and set. I want to set this off of the different surfaces which I'm using. So I'm using grass, so I'll connect it there. I'll get another one off of the dirt and another one off of general. So we are going to be setting it off of grass, dirt, and general as they are the three different visual effects that I'm using in my project. I'm going to close that like so, just to give us a bit more space. And now what we want to do is off of the grass, we're setting our footstep visual effect. So I'm going to select asset and set this to be grass which again is from the pack which I'm using, linked in the description down below. For dirt, I want to obviously set this to the dirt, and general, I'm going to set this to general. Again, you can be using any different ones you like, it doesn't have to be these three, they can be one, two, three, four, and it can be grass, dirt, sand. Again, I've gone over that quite a bit, but just to let you know, it does work with anything that you want to choose. Out of these sets, these can go straight into the spawn system at location. So what's going to happen is if we are on grass, it's going to set the footstep visual effect to be grass and then spawn it in. If we're on general, it will do general and spawn in and so on and so forth for all of the ones which you have like so. Now the location of this, we want this to be our right foot. So we want it to be just underneath the right foot. So what I'm going to do to get that is I'm going to right click, get player character. Out the return value of this, I'm going to get socket location from the mesh like so. And the in socket name we want to have as our right foot. So for me using the mannequin it's going to be foot underscore r or lowercase. And to check what it is for you, you can just hit skeleton up in the top right, click on the right foot and you can see that it is named foot underscore r or then lowercase. You want to make sure that you spell this absolutely correct, absolutely perfectly, otherwise it won't work. So for me that's what it is. So from the mesh I'm getting the location of the foot r. Return value of that can go straight into the location, as that's what we want. We wanted the location of our right foot, and so we've got that. The rotation scale we can leave the same. The rotation, what I might do just to be extra sure it works perfectly, is out the line trace again, out the out hit, I'm going to break hit result. Opening that up, and the normal, I'm going to make rot from x, just to make sure this is always facing the correct direction, and the return value will go to the rotation. Connect that up like so. Again, that isn't necessary because it should always be the correct rotation anyway, as it's going to be on the floor, it won't be on a wall or a roof or anything. However, I'm going to keep it in anyway, just in case. And the scale you can increase or decrease dependent on how you like, but for me I think keeping it as one will be fine, and everything else we can keep as default. So we can compile and save that, and now that will be working for our right footstep. Now we want to do the same for the left as well. So what I'm going to do is right click and get anim notify footstep L. And what we can do is simply just duplicate this code. So I can select all of this and then hit Control C, Control V to duplicate it down here and then just simply connect it in like so. So now this will work as well with the left foot step as when we then have the left foot hit the ground it's going to fire off this code as well. However, we do want to change one tiny thing and that's just to make it spawn under the left foot instead of the right. So instead of foot underscore R it's going to be foot underscore L. And now this will all work the exact same way, perfectly like so. So we can compile and save, and this should be working for us. So we can hit play to test this out. We walk around, nothing happens, because at the moment we're on default, not any specific one. If we go over dirt, we're going to have the dirt visual effect spawn in like so. 
If we go over our general, we will have the general. Again, it's not too visible because of the color difference, but it's there. And over grass, we're going to get the grass, and this works perfectly like so. And again, this is also very easy to implement in the play sound location as well for our footstep. What you do is you just set the sound there and the half play sound location in the exact same way we've done with the visual effects. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. We've set up this system in which we can have different visual effects for our footsteps on different surfaces. So here we have dirt, here we have general or concrete, and here we have grass. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.